great sausage here. <laughs> and of course your meatball. And welcome to Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage. But as I've said in the previous recording that we don't ever see because they kept bolting up, this is also Gateway to Glimmark, which is also um, the European title. Yeah, I, I thought I'd They're not working. Oh no, it is working. Oh. It, it just it says press start, but it wasn't start I had to press. <laughs> Did you uh, sausage it up? Did no, you? I didn't sausage it up. But yeah, so uh, the EU version was called Gateway to Glimmer, not Ripto's Rage. This is the American version. The American version, okay. As far as I'm aware, this was my favourite Spyro game. Was it? Yeah. If it's the one I'm thinking of, it was my favourite Spyro game. Well, let's have a look at it then, shall we? Ever gonna stop? I've forgotten what the sun looks like. Yeah, this was story. We don't need story. Spy, spy, I was talking. Yeah, we don't need story. We're only here to show you about the Spyro game. Look, yeah, this is the one I enjoyed. Hey, good. Because uh, you've got Hunter, Bianca, and then that scientist. A long story short, some evil witch woman actually comes along and balls his things up and hires an apprentice to help. And your job is to come and fix it again. Can you fly yet? Or, no. Or just float? We only yeah. float. Spyro, welcome to Glimmer. See, it's called Glimmer, so it's Gateway to Glimmer in the um, EU oh. version. Can you stop them? I should be able to stop all these lizard people, yeah. There must be a reason why they've called it Glimmer and the other one. Yeah. Because I think... I think in this one it's something to do with Ripto, but they changed it for the European one, so it wasn't. I don't know for certain if that's true, but it, this one's called Ripto's Rage, and as far as I'm aware, you don't actually see him in this. No, oh, right. As far as I'm aware. Like, why would you call it Ripto's Rage if it's something else? Because as far as I'm aware, it's a female, it's a woman. Oh, no, 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 rephrase, it is Ripto. I'm thinking of the wrong game. Okay. I'm thinking of the wrong game. I think Spyro 3 is the woman. Uh, I think it is Ripto because he's got uh, a new mount that he's sitting on. But yeah, this is just your basic Spyro goodness. You just go around nabbing gems. And probably collecting um, honeycomb um, segments. It's not Banjo Kazooie. Oh, right, okay. This isn't Banjo game. I really wish there was a new Banjo game that wasn't Nuts and Bolts. Not that I hate Nuts and Bolts, I just prefer it. I quite enjoyed Nuts and Bolts. I, I, I enjoy. I mean. It's a banjo spin-off. There's no way anyone can ever. No, you can't. You, you can't argue that it's not. You can't put it toe to toe with. Like banjo Tooie. Uh, banjo Tooie and banjo Tui, Kazooie. That's yeah. The one. yeah. You're not Toe Jam and L. They're 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 just cool. a... they're cool funky aliens, dude. But yeah, um, you cannot compare it to a proper banjo Kazooie game. You just can't. And anyone who says, "Oh, it's the same as a banjo Kazooie game," no, it's not. It's very much vehicle-based puzzle solve. You build your own thing, like Robocraft. And you unlock different parts for your vehicles. Spoilers. But um, it is a really good game. I really did enjoy it. But it's not the same. Like It's not the same as... Go oh, okay. no, away. Like, oh. it, it's, not, it's not the same as like the old Banjo games. Like where you can collect stuff and kill a giant witch at the end. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Which I do miss. Because <sighs> eh. Grunty was one of these villains that you actually could hate. <sighs> Because the um, the uh, the video you can't skip the intro scene. Yeah. Um, how long was that? It was about ten minutes, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, there Jeez. he is. There, there's money bags. Can I say something? Gem cutters are a bit too short to climb these ladders. Looks like you are too. After you learn to climb, come back to Glimmer to see me. Okay. Uh, so this is um what they used to do with classic games a long time ago. Um, they used to block places off by you not having the ability to access them. And you need to get yourself enough of the currency in the game, so let you, yourself through. which lets you buy the upgrade, so you can go further on. It's a really clever mechanic. It, let, it gives it levels replayability, if done well. If you don't do it well, it just gets you annoyed and peeved because you've got to come back to a level that could have been potentially difficult, and you've got to do it again. Hmm. Don't you kind of miss these kind of games? I do. I like, really do. Because, like we keep saying on our videos, you know the. Um, these kind of platformers are no ah, longer around. No, well, they are, but they're just indie games. Yeah, but they're, but they're, no, yeah. they're, they're, they're not the same caliber as before. Well, they're not the AAA. Yeah, you're not, you're not, titles, you, don't get they? you do not get AAA titles like you used to. You get like what? Um, Call of Duty. Um, yeah, you you, FIFA. You get shooters and all of these mainstream games. games you know. And every game. This is the part that I was talking to Meatball recently about. Every game you uh, have now always is usually online 
Yeah. Like, every game is usually online, and that's what really gets to me now. Like, these games weren't online, were amazing. I know what they're trying to do is trying to get everybody together and uh, play together. But it doesn't work together. that way. You just get elitists. So like if you don't stand up to uh, like what we want, you're you're a noob pretty much. Yes. Like with World of Warcraft, for example, perfect example there. If you don't know the tactics of how to beat a specific boss because you're wanting to actually find it for yourself, heaven forbid, then you're considered a noob. Yes, because you have to, uh, uh, you know, look on a YouTube or other um, uh, video channels and uh, learn, the tactics. Uh, learn the tactics. And what you said, I think it was yesterday, wasn't it? Last night. Um, the basically, um, you know, you're going to the end of the movie. Yeah, uh, and spoiling the end. I mean, what was the point of that? Yeah, what I was pretty much trying to say, just so they can get the gist of the conversation. Ooh, for talisman. I've opened a gate out. Is that? Magic portal next to me will take you to some. Magic portal. Yeah, take you to the summer, yeah, summer forest. So that 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 will take you to the whole world. Uh, but yeah, as I was saying, um, with things like that, like with World of Warcraft for dungeons, it's like you need to know the tactics, or you ain't gonna do dungeons and raids with us. Well, it's a brand new dungeon that you've never encountered before in your entire life. And what they're asking you to do is watch a video so you know the tactics of how to beat the boss. While I'll admit, that is handy. It also spoils it. It's like, you go out, you buy yourself a game, but you jump straight to the end boss. And you spoil the story for it. It's like someone telling you the ending to Fallout 4, and you've only just bought the game. Like telling, for example, if there's a crucial moment in, in, in the story where a character is supposed to have died, but at the very end of the story he comes back and someone says, oh no, he didn't die, that's spoiling the crucial moment. And World of Warcraft ain't cheap. No, <laughs> you know, it ain't cheap. It is <laughs> not cheap. Like for the basic update, it's £35, which is about the same price, if as not game. more, yeah. as a whole brand new game. Plus, you have to spend ten pounds a month to yeah. actually play that game. Exactly. So, so it, I want to experience it for myself. Yeah. But going back to your original point, which was like these games aren't made anymore, and I don't know why. Like, yeah. I mean, I know they're redoing um, Crash Bandicoot. That's the thing that's happening. They're giving it a lick of paint and bringing it back out. Um, I mean, they are bringing back old games. Yeah, but they're not making new ones. No. That's the point you're trying to make there. I yeah, understand. New, new IP, this kind of thing. You know. Yeah, like, we don't have anything like a brand new Spyro game that's like this. We just have um, Skylanders now. Uh, there is that one which uh, was with the, the lizardy kind of thing that I showed you a couple of months ago. Ukulele? Uh, yeah, that's the one, isn't yeah, it? Ukulele's yeah, Ukulele's coming soon. That's a new IP. I don't know what that is. Uh, it it's, looks a, cool. it's a, it's, it's a hole, yeah, I understand that, but... Do I have to do anything with that? Yeah! Oh! Ah, uh, that's how you um, oh, that's what progress, the wings are for. I guess. That's probably what the wings are for, yeah. Hello! Uh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I don't get that. It's got wings already. <laughs> yeah, he can fly, but he needs to go through a wing portal to fly. <laughs> so it's a dragon that can fly. Or, or try to at least. That's, that's wrong. <laughs> that is just weird, Spyro. Go, 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 go. Boo. There you go. Bold dancer. So I just blew all those up. And you got a crystal. Is that going to give me more gems? Thanks for helping no. me light the lamps, Spyro. Uh, thanks Very for helping me light good. the lamps. Uh, Fairy gave you an orb. What orb? Oh, an orb. This orb. This orb. <laughs> I can't remember this what orb. you're supposed to collect in this, but these sort of games are dry, like platforming collectathons. Yeah. I miss them. I've said that a few times in my Fur Fighters playthrough, which you should definitely check out, by the way. Um, I miss those style of games when they used to just make them simple. Like, real simple. They don't have to have huge amount of depth to them. Just no. something, something fun to play. Like, something a kid could pick up, maybe, and enjoy, but there's enough there for adults to enjoy, Because, I mean, too. I think this was, like, a three-plus game or something. Yeah, this was three-plus. There was all sorts yeah. on the PS1. That was yeah. a perfect era. Like, PS1 and PS2 have got some of the most amazing games on that you'll ever find in history, along with things like the N64, yeah, the GameCube... Yeah. As soon as the Wii, the PS3, and the Xbox 360 come out, things started to get a bit more mainstream. A bit more serious. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. We didn't get and you didn't really get anything fun anymore. They're like, oh, it has to be online or nothing. <laughs> and Call of Duty, don't get me started on that, Jesus. I mean, sorry if you're a Call of Duty fan, but I don't see the appeal of just constantly playing a game that gets a bit of a lick of paint every year. 
and then you have to spend like what fifty quid every time it comes out. Yeah. And it's like literally just uh, what two, two, three maps maybe. Yeah, you've got like a few extra maps, and even release more map packs. It's like, you, you, what, what's the appeal there? You're still shooting something, someone. Yeah. You know, and <laughs> why, why? I mean, uh, Titanfall have probably done it well. They've had their game out a while, and now they're bringing out another one rather than doing like one a year, because you can almost guarantee there's a Call of Duty every year. Almost guarantee it. Like, if not every year, every other year at least. And like, they had like what was it, Black Ops? Then they've got Black Ops Two, mm. and then they've, I think the next one's in space or something. And like, yeah. they're coming out with ideas that they just can't. Like they're just running out of ideas. I think they're just running out of yeah, ideas. Yeah, they're just running out of they? ideas. Like, yeah. you've got space. The next it will be, oh, we're on a different planet. So, so it's Halo, pretty much, then. Is that what you're trying to say? They're slowly just evolving into something they're not. Yeah. I mean, I, I understand that sometimes the story might be interesting. Because I'll admit, I played Call of Duty... Oh, well, yeah, the single player. I think uh, Call of Duty Modi Wear, Modern Warfare 2. Quite a while old now. But I did finish the actual campaign to that really short as it was, um, I enjoyed it. I did enjoy the campaign to it, which is a surprise. Yeah. But multiplayer to it, nah, nice just not, not for me. But you find that the, um, you know, the, the single player is, like you said, very, very short. And, yeah. um, and the rest of the game is meant to be a multiplayer yeah, game. Yeah, it's mostly just a yeah. multiplayer game. Yeah. I mean, fair enough, World of Warcraft is only multiplayer, but... The, the, what, we weren't trying to say that it should be single player. I was just saying, like, on, on the basis of that, if you do the multiplayer aspects of it and actually um, play along with other people, they usually have a go if you're not up to snuff. Yeah. Now like you're doing crap DPS because you don't know your rotation. Some people out there, this might surprise you, don't even know what a rotation is. They just click buttons and hope things die. Yeah. But who and who are we to tell them to do anything different? If they're having fun and that's how they want to play their game, their money, they play it how the hell they like. I understand if you're going into the boss and pulling it yeah, and killing everybody yeah. like I mean, there there is obviously a line. You like you don't go into it if if you're gonna go and do stuff mm -hmm. like that and you you're not hundred percent, at least do a little research, especially if they're dungeons that have been around a while. Do a bit more research into it and know what you're getting yourself into. Don't just jump in and hope for the best. Yeah. I mean, people always say, well, why don't you use that advice for the new dungeons? Because mm. they're new. You want to experience them for yourself first hand before learning anything. You want to go in blind, see some of the things that they want to see. Yeah, you, you need to go in with friends, don't you? Yeah. yeah. You really need to get a group of five and just dick around in it for exactly. a bit. Exactly, and then you can die as much as you want. And yeah. Every, you just get the Mickey taken out. You get you know. a group of patient friends, may we add. Is it, yes, yes. If you don't get patient friends, usually it's like, what are you doing? Because <sighs> even friends can be grumpy. But yeah, we seem to go off tangent, don't we? We always do, do Yeah, we? we were talking about a total random thing. Anyway, to summarise, we would like to see more games like this. So indie games developers, take inspiration from these sort of games. You can learn a lot from them and they were popular for a reason. I seriously think there is a place in the market at the moment for these sort of things. Like, for people like me and Meeple here and other gamers the like me. Yeah. yeah, the older generation who grew up with these. This is why I think Pokemon Go was so huge. Yes. Because the, yeah. old, the the generation that grew up with Pokemon and wanted to play it in the real world can, which is why it's so much of a huge thing. And how many, how many people are playing that now? Yeah, and youngsters worldwide. Yeah, exactly. And climate. youngsters out there who um like never played Pokemon in history are joining in because it's hip. So there you go. Yeah. P point in case right there. Make some game that was like really old and not not many people have done, and then make a new one out of it. Anyway, I have been Sausage. <laughs> I've been Meatball. And this has been Spyro, a bit more of a rant than a actual show you what you do, but I enjoyed this game anyway. Thank you all for watching. Take care and goodbye. Goodbye.